everyone, welcome to the church. Gonna get this, try to get this time done. Oh, I did it. I, I did it on time. I always struggle with trying to um, get the camera to turn around. So I'm gonna wait for some people to join. Hopefully, hello, hello, KRF sellers, welcome. Welcome to the scope. Where are you from? Tell me where you're from. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the scope. Thanks for the hearts already. Welcome to the scope. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the hearts. I appreciate the hearts. I appreciate the hearts. Um, today, I just wanted to talk to talk to you guys. And if you don't mind, if you share with your followers, I'd love it. Um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about surviving infidelity. Welcome. Welcome to Season Spoon. Welcome to the scope. I've been seeing you on um, Scope all day today. We were on TJ Scope together. So welcome to the Scope. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys don't mind. Share with your followers. Share this message with everyone. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about surviving infidelity. There are so many people who are in relationships where they've been betrayed. Hi, you're from Memphis. Hi, Katrina. Welcome. Welcome from Memphis. My best friend is from Memphis. I met her at um, Fisk University almost 20 years ago back in 1996 um, and that was the first time that I uh, had an experience with someone from Memphis and I just love her spirit so good people so I think I always say people in Tennessee good people good people good people so welcome to my scope nice to nice to meet you and thank you for sharing with your followers thank you so much so guys today I wanted to talk to you about surviving infidelity and there are so many people who've been in relationships who who've been betrayed, who um, have let these relationships hold them back, or they're still in the marriage. You know, they did that idea of let me forgive you. Uh, welcome, welcome. Um, they did that idea of let me forgive you, um, praying and hoping that they'll be able to get over being cheated on. Um, and for some people, it's just very hard. They don't know how to get there. So they're stuck in a marriage and they're trying to figure out, do I even still like this person? Thank you for sharing your followers. Do I even still like this person um, that I'm in this relationship with, that I'm in this marriage with, that I'm in, you know, this partnership with? So today I just really wanted to talk about some key things on how to survive an infidelity issue. And I thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. Please keep them coming. Thank you so much. Um, and 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 when I see my client, first of all, for you for you guys that don't know me, let me introduce myself. I apologize. My name is Dr. Rosalind Aker Black. I am a clinical psychologist and I uh, specialize in um, child, family, and couple um, relationships. I also do a lot of forensic work, a lot of trauma work. So I love this whole idea of helping people when they are in their worst pain. And I know that sounds crazy, but um, I, I love the idea of of getting people to to a healthier self, if that makes sense. So I decided to start doing these scopes because people fear like going to see a psychologist. It's like this whole thing with if I have to go see a psychologist, if I have to go see a therapist, then I'm sick. I'm I'm, uh, I'm weak. I'm I'm dumb. Just whatever kind of stereotypes and stigmas that we have. So really, my reason for doing these these scopes is to show you that it's not a bad place to be. That it's a great place to be to get your healing. You know, we, we have to heal. And especially in, in the African, well, in a lot of minority communities, it's, um, you know, we think that we can go pray a situation away, which we can. I'm a Christian. I believe in praying. I completely believe in that. But we also have to recognize that there are people who are trained to do this kind of work that are sent in our lives to help us. So um, I, I, I am one of those people that I want to help you. I absolutely want to help you. So let's get into the scope today. I really want to talk about some ways to help you get past the infidelity. So the first thing you have to do is that you have to decide individually, the two of you, hey, Yasmin. The two of you in the relationship, you absolutely have to decide whether you really want to be fully committed to make this relationship work. Mm -hmm. Not just staying there because, you know, you have nowhere to go. You you don't want to start over, but that you really want your relationship to work. And that's an individual commitment. Thank you for sharing with your followers. That's an individual um, commitment.
commitment, an individual commitment to decide whether you want to work on it together. Because the worst thing ever is to have one person working to make the relationship work. And the and their spouse or their paramour is like, I don't want to work. I don't want to do this. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I don't want to be a part of this relationship anymore. So you feel like you're in a space of where you're trying by yourself. You're loving by yourself. You're working by yourself. And that's a horrible place to be in. So in order to get your relationship back on track, both of you have to really commit and really take the time out to honestly try to make the relationship work. So the second part of trying to figure out how to make the relationship work is that you have to learn how to communicate effectively. Most people don't know how to communicate, unfortunately. A lot of people, when you're arguing, no, no, that's fine, that's fine, just catch it on the replay. A lot of people, when you're arguing, you know, you are in a space of, you know, listening to, you know, to defend yourself, not really listening to hear what it is that your partner is saying. And so we get into these arguments and they become huge blowouts because we're not really hearing each other. We're not communicating effectively. And so there are three parts to communication. The first part is you have to actively listen. You have to actively listen to your partner. And what I mean by that, you can't be in a situation of where they're talking and telling you their needs and you're just defending your position. That's not actively listening. You have, thank you. I love the hearts. Please keep them coming. Thank you so much. That's not actively listening to your partner. To actively listen is to understand what they're saying and to understand their perspective. And so that's the second part of communication. You have to be under able to understand what their need is because so many times we get into a relationship and we think we're doing everything right we think we're on point we think we're you know like you're the best in the relationship the best you know you just think that everything is good and not until your partner lets you know that there's an issue and lets you know there's a problem so you have to listen to understand what is it your partner is saying to you and guys here's a clue especially for the men when your wife is nagging you, that's a clue that there's a need that's not being met. So you like you guys like to call it nagging, but I really want you to see it very differently, that it really is that she's asking you to meet a need. She's asking you to meet her need. So the second part of communication is that you have to learn how to listen and understand. Not listen to defend, but listen to understand. So you have active listening, the first part of effective communication, and then the second part is listening to understand. And then the third part is um, actively doing what it is that the person needs from you. So responding to, to the need. So a lot of times we just talk and you feel like you just keep talking about the same situation. And like there's nothing, there's no, you know, no ends to a mean. You keep arguing about the same situation. It's because you're not listening to each other. You're not listening to the need. You're listening to argue your point, not listening to understand your spouse's point. So that's a huge, big difference, huge, big difference. Um, and once you master that, once you master those, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Prospering Nisha. Once you master those three things, then you have learned how to communicate effectively. But until you get that concept that you need to actively listen, you need to listen to understand not listen to defend and then act upon the need you're not communicating effectively you're just wasting air time and space arguing for no reason so you have to learn how to communicate effectively now this is what really um this is what really gets the clients that i work with when i talk to them about um welcome T tijuana moving on welcome um when i talk to them about the cheating they think that's like the ultimate betrayal really it's not a person cheating really isn't the reason why your relationship is breaking up it's just a symptom of something else an underlying core need that's not being met and honestly and people people don't believe me when i say this but an affair can be good for a relationship because it will bring up those things that you guys are sweeping under the rug that you're not dealing with in your relationship. You're not dealing with the resentment. 
that you may have towards your spouse. You're not dealing with, you know, unforgiveness of other things that you may have with your spouse. And so the cheating is just that catalyst that brings brings it all out. You know, and so the problem is the person that that's cheating, they get manipulated. They get manipulated in the process thinking that it's better over here with 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 I hate this word, but with the side chick or the side dude or the person that they're having the affair with. They get manipulated into thinking that it's so much better. But the truth of the matter is, is that the side chick or the side dude is still trying to get their attention. So they are doing everything possible to meet the need. They're giving the person what they want. So I always tell people in a relationship, you have to keep on giving your spouse what they need from you. You can't stop once you get married. You have to continue. It's a continual process. I see a lot of hearts. Somebody really agrees with that point. I see a lot of hearts right now. Thank you for the hearts. But it's, it's a continual thing. This isn't just something that you do once you get the ring and you say, I do. It is a continual thing. This is what we call maintenance in a relationship. You have to maintain the relationship by the way you got the relationship. So the grass may not be greener on the other side. The grass is just easier. Hmm. The grass is just easier. And the reason being is because they're not dealing with all the life issues that you deal with in a relationship. So when they have this side chick or side dude, they're not they're not raising kids with that person. They're not figuring out financial issues with that person. They're just getting their needs met, exclusively getting their needs met. That's why these side relationships or these affairs are so um, exciting to the individual because they can forget about the reality of their life. So they're in this space of, hi, Minister Sandra Weeks, Weeks welcome. They're in this space of, being able to forget about drama because nine times out of ten the person they're having an affair with is not going to give them any drama they're just going to try to meet their needs and that's the reason why affairs last for so long or why people are really interested in affairs is not and most people don't set out in a relationship to cheat they don't most people do not welcome supporter of ahj most people don't set out um to cheat once they get in a relationship, but they get into a space of not being able to get their needs met. And so it's just like, here's the, here's the thing, here's, here's the truth. Relationship needs are real. They're just like biological urges. It's just like when you're hungry, what do you do? You go eat. When you're thirsty, what do you do? You go get you something to drink. When your needs are not met, you find any way possible to get your need met. So the cheating, when I say cheating is a symptom, it's a symptom of your spouse, your paramour, or you not getting your need met. It's not that your spouse is so horrible. It's just that your needs are not getting met. And if you're not effectively communicating, hey, if you're not effectively communicating about your needs, then guess what? That's your fault. Because people can't read your mind. I know people hate when I say that. But if you don't tell me what you need from me, how am I going to fit that need? How am, I, how am I going to fulfill your need? If you need to have sex three times a week to make you feel whole and complete in a relationship, as my spouse, you better tell me that. You better let me know that so I can make sure I'm doing my part. If you need um, affection, if that's your love language, if you need those things, it's your job to tell me that. I can't just sit back and try to read your, read your mind. And it's unfair when we ask people to do that. It's unfair when we try to hold someone else to, um, to, the, to the fire to make us happy. That's unfair. It's unfair to make somebody else responsible for your emotions. It's unfair. It is totally unfair. Thanks for the hearts. It's totally unfair. So the first thing you got to do in surviving infidelity, as I mentioned before, and I just like to reiterate the points. Thank you for the hearts. I love them. Thank you. Keep them coming. Is that you got to recommit. And it's an individual decision on whether you're recommitting to your relationship. Because again, the worst thing ever is when one person is, is working hard and trying to make the relationship better and they don't feel that from their spouse. It creates contentment and resentment, and that's not what you want. The second thing, you got to learn how to communicate effectively. 
You have to learn how to communicate effectively. And then there are the three parts to communicating effectively. And um, the first part of communicating effectively is actively listening. Actively listening, hearing what your partner has to say. The second part of um, communicating effectively is listening to understand, not to defend your position, but to understand. And then the third part is to act on. You must act on what it is that the person says that they need from you. So those are the first two things that you need to do to get past um, infidelity. And then your last thing, the very last thing that helps people, that I, that has helped individuals with infidelity issues, is that you, the offender, has to decrease insecurity in the relationship. And what I mean by that, if you are hiding your phone, turning your phone over, you you if they if you guys mismatch your phones and and your spouse has your phone and you're freaking out, then those are some things you have to change. You got to change those things because those are ta- telltale signs that you're cheating or that you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. So you have to decrease those things if she asks or he asks let me see your phone it shouldn't be an issue if you're not cheating you be like oh here you go you shouldn't even worry about it it shouldn't be an issue you have to give the evidence that you're no longer doing what you were doing before and a lot of people don't want to do that because they feel like somebody is you're trying to control me you're trying to be my parent you're trying to be over me and that's not it at all what you're doing is that you're decreasing insecurity the only reason why a person becomes insecure in a relationship is because there's a threat to the security of the relationship. I'll repeat that. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate them. Thank you so much. There's a threat to the insecurity of the relationship. So sorry about that. Had a call come in. Sorry about that. So um, in order to decrease insecurity, you have to make sure you're not providing threats to the security of the relationship. How do you do that? You become more honest. If you're having those urges to go online and and look on these web, uh, what is it, Ashley Madison, that website for like married people or whatever. If you're having those urges, then that's when you need to start communicating with your spouse. I'm having the urge to do this. So that means that we got to work on some stuff. I'm not getting a need met. Because really, when you have those urges to kind of do those things, you're looking for someone else to meet the need. You're looking for someone else to meet the need. And here's the truth. And I tell this to people all the time. Stop holding back on sex from your partner. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. And not that you're the reason, not, not that you're the reason why they made the choice to cheat, but there are situational factors that lead to cheating. It is unfair to do that to your partner. It is unfair to not have sex with your husband or your wife. It's almost like you are putting them on punishment. You are not the parent. You are their spouse. So don't do that because at the end of the day, you are the only one. And I see a lot of hearts, so you guys must really be believing in this. You are the only one at the end of the day that can please your spouse in that way. So you got to get on your job. You got to do what you got to do to make sure you're meeting the need. Stop putting your partners in time out and thinking that they're not going to have a temper tantrum. It's just too unfair. Stop doing that to them. You got to stop with some of the situational factors. You have to look at your role in it. You have to look at your role in these things. So those are the three key things about um, surviving fidelity infidelity. So you want to make sure that everybody's recommitting back to the relationship. And it's an individual decision because when somebody is forced into it, then guess what? They're really not committing. They're just doing it to go along. So either they don't want to pay child support. They don't want to pay alimony. You got to get to the root cause of it. Why are you recommitting? Thank you for sharing with your followers. Why are you recommitting back to the relationship? Is it because you really want to love me? Because a lot of people think that love conquers all. Love is great, but commitment is a much bigger factor. It is a much bigger factor. Commitment is is greater than love. And I hate to say it, but every morning, I've been married for nine years. And every morning, I wake up and say, I'm, I'm recommitting to my husband. I'm recommitting to my husband. Because guess what? When you're beefing, and yes, I said beefing. Hi. When you're beefing you um, with your spouse, you a lot of distractions come your way. 
let your spouse not meet your need and y'all leave the house and y'all have arguments or whatever. And it seems like all day, a lot of distractions come your way. And here's the one thing that, 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 that is hilarious to me. I can tell someone, oh, no, I'm, ma I'm married. And then they'll come back. Do you need a friend? No, I'm married. I don't need a friend. I'm happily married. Yes, it is. Love, 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 love is great. Hey, Nikisha Michelle. So, guys, all of you guys need to follow Nikisha Michelle. She's doing big things out there in, in L.A. I think you're still in L.A., Nikisha Michelle. Um, she has a radio show out there. She's written books. She's great in this whole love factor, too. So, if you guys aren't following her, you should be following her. That's Nikisha Michelle. Nikisha, post again so they can see your name, so they can follow you. Um, yeah, but but commitment is a much bigger factor. And 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 the reason, that's the same crazy as asking, are you happily married? Yes, I, I hear that. You'd be surprised how many times I hear that craziness. You happily married? Does it make you happy? Da, 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 da. And, and, and truthfully, and I say this all the time, Men, don't leave your women out here lonely. Don't let them watch. Because you can be in a marriage and still be lonely. You can be in a marriage and still be lonely. So I tell this to men all the time. Don't let your wife walk out the house and be lonely. And I tell women, don't let your husband walk out the house horny. You have to make sure. Excuse me. and My mom might watch this scope. Sorry, mom. I said that. But it's true. You have four kids, so you know. Um, it, 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 you, you cannot let them walk out the house with their needs not being met. My pastor, I got a first Baptist church at Glen Arden here in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. And my pastor says all the time, my wife never leave, let me leave the house. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it real. <laughs> he never lets me leave the house hungry. And what he means by that is I can pass seven restaurants and they won't appease me because I'm full they won't distract me because I'm full I don't need them it's the same thing in your relationship you got to keep your spouse full if you keep your spouse full they won't look at other things they just won't it's a reality and the way you keep them full is that you build each other up you give them emotional support you let them know you're in their corner you let them know that i'm here for you and there are some people and i will say this there are some people who can't manage that and they uh, may still cheat anyway that's an individual choice but that's when you have to be smart enough to make an assessment of whether that relationship is for you whether you need to get out look at the writing on the wall it's a full soul won't be tempted by honey. That's the Bible. Absolutely. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Thanks. More than welcome for that confirmation. More than welcome. And at the end of the day, you really have to get into a space of recognizing what is best for you and how to make that work. And a lot of times we just go with the flow and we push things under the rug because we don't want to deal with the drama of it or we don't want to start over in a relationship. If you don't want to start off in a relationship, then you got to get your, you got to get your relationship right. It's fair to you, to your spouse in a relationship. You've got to get your relationship right. Right. You have to. You have to. You have to. You know, I, I have a um, a giveaway that I'm I'm going to give away to you guys that are on Periscope right here. But are there any questions about um, keys to surviving infidelity? Do you have any questions? I'll do a little Q and A with you guys if you have any. Um, based on based on the three things that I gave you, committing yourself back to the relationship, learning how to um, affect a, a communicate effectively, excuse me, and then the third one is um, decreasing decreasing the insecurity. As my husband says, it's called choice management. Uh, it is. It it is. It is a choice. It is a choice to cheat. People make a choice to cheat. Now there are. Um, there are some situational factors that that may lead to the no. individual making a choice, but people make an individual choice and they have to accept the choices that they make. Sorry, my dog. Sorry, I'm home today, so my dog is. I'm here with my dog. It's the holiday here. Oh, well, it's the holiday, so we're at home today. So I apologize for the barking, but it's an individual choice. Um, individual to choice to cheat. So, you know, that's a sign of of emotional maturity. I this weekend I I um had the pleasure of 
working with um, Dondre Whitfield, Hassani Pettiford, and Brian Heat. They have this amazing tour. And Nakisha Michelle, I'm going to tell you about it because they're coming out to L.A. They have this amazing tour called the Manhood Tour. And what it is, it's a tour that's challenging men to like step up to the plate and be men, not boys, but men. Recognize what the responsibility. Yes, I'll, I'll recap. I will. I'll recap for you. Um, recognizing what the responsibility is for men. So I'm working with this great project. And, um, you know, I, 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 I commend these brothers because they, and, and they're all, you guys, you probably know Dondre because he is, um, he played Robert on the Cosby show as Vanessa's boyfriend. And then he's on Hollywood house, house husbands and, um, mistresses. Like he's a, he's a 30 year veteran actor, um, has been acting since he was 15, I believe, um, three time nominated Emmy nominated actor. So he's a phenomenal actor, but you know, just listening to him, he said his purpose is speaking to men. And, um, Hassani Pettiford, he's a relationship expert. You guys have seen him on TV one. You've seen him on, um, everything, Wendy Williams, uh, and, and Brian heat. He's this prolific speaker. You guys have seen him on Roland Martin, all this good stuff. So these men, I didn't see them as the celebrities they were when they were doing their program, their performance. But I saw these, these men as husbands and fathers who really were challenging men that we got to step up to the plate and get our community back in order because our community is suffering. And it's so real. What do when there was one time cheating in the marriage and a child? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, that's a hard one. You know, for some people, when there's an outside child that is um, born, that's some people's deal breaker. And if you know that you can't deal with that, you can't manage that, then you have to make a decision about what you want to do in that marriage. Because at the end of the day, and this is what happens a lot of times, the child is the one that really suffers the most because they're going back and forth between this adult drama um, and, and, and I hate this idea where, where we have these men and, and, and women who are creating these families and just leaving these families. And these babies are the one that are suffering with the consequences of adult choices. So you really have to get into, a, I don't, I, whoever your God is, pray about it, that you're guided to make a decision on what's best. But if you accept, if you accept that situation, then you have to love that child. You have to love that child in that situation because it's not it's not the child's fault. Mm -hmm. It's not the child's fault. Um, you know, it's it's an unfortunate situation, mm -hmm. but it happens more times than we than we know it. Unfortunately, it it happens all the time. I I see a lot. Of, I actually, this is probably what brings me the most clients. A situation where a child has there's an outside child and it really is remember at the beginning I talked about that you had and I'll recap for you Nikisha Michelle you had asked on um, the recap of the three keys of surviving mm -hmm. so the first um, thing is that the individuals in a relationship have to make a decision independent of each other of whether they want to commit to the relationship that has to be a choice that you make that you want to recommit to the relationship and then once you both are on board the woman is pregnant with a man who is not the husband oh that's um that sucks but she can't be she she has to own up to her consequences the reality is is that there are positive and negative consequences in everything that we do and so she has to be honest because again it's unfair to the child it's unfair to the husband and it's unfair to the man that the child doesn't know who their real family is. It's unfair. It's, it's, it's unfair. I'm sorry. My Chase, please stop barking. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. It's, it's unfair. Um, it, it's, it's an, it's unfair to the child. The child needs to know who their family is. They need to know. It's just the reality. They need to know who their family is. Um, 
And she can't be coward enough not to own up to her mistake. She has to. It just is what it is. Got to own up to the mistake. Because it's unfair to that child to keep the child from the father. And it's unfair to the husband to make him think that that's his child and it's not. So she has to be honest in that situation and let everyone know what's going on. It's just a reality. It is what it is. It's unfortunate. And if she feels like she's going to be in danger, then she needs to get an escape plan first before she reveals this to the husband. That's, that's, that's just all that she can do. She has to be honest. Because family secrets kill us. Family secrets kill us. So keeping a family secret and then the child finds finds out later later down the line, that's just going to breed um, deceit and contentment within the family. And it's going to become a generational situation at that point. So just be honest at the onset is the best advice that I can give you. Did that answer your question? Are there any other questions? Hopefully, I, I hope that answered your question. I'll recap for you, Nikisha Michelle. Awesome, awesome, um, Prosper Nisha. Glad that that answered your question. I'll recap um, the three things that can help with infidelity. Is the first one is that you must um, you must commit. You must commit um, back to recommit to the relationship. The second thing that's important is that you have to learn how to communicate. You have to see the infidelity for what it was. It was a symptom of an underlying situation. So you have to see it for what it was. And um, there are three parts to communicating effectively. The first part is actively listening. The second part is listening to understand, not listening to, oh, you for, oh, I don't know where you froze at. Oh no. I hope you didn't miss too much, but you know, you can catch it on the replay. You know, you can catch it on a replay. Um, the second part is um, you didn't miss the giveaway, though. So you're good. The second part is of, of communicating effectively is um, communicating to understand, not communicating to defend your position. And then the third part is acting upon whatever the need is. So that's the three parts of effective communication. And then the last part is that you have to de decrease the threat in the relationship. You have to decrease the threat to, to security. So you have to make your partner feel secure again so that they can trust you again and to be vulnerable with you again in the relationship. So, all right, are there any more questions before I go into this giveaway? I hope this helped you guys. I, um, I hope that if you are in a situation of yeah, you got to decrease the threat. That, and and that's, the, that's the hardest part that people really have because they have this idea of thinking that, thank you for the hearts, they have this idea of thinking that, you know, if I'm telling you where I'm going, then you, I'm answering to you. No, you need to tell me where you're going out of courtesy because I'm, I'm your spouse. If something happens to you, I need to know that. So you have to decrease the threat. If what you're doing is causing insecurity in your relationship, then it's your job to listen to the need of your spouse to figure out what that is, what those threats are, and for you to for you to decrease them. Oh, I'm glad this is good stuff for you. And here's the truth. When you're ready to be in a relationship, you'll be ready and you'll be armed with some information on how to have a successful relationship. You'll be ready and you'll be armed. You know, um, I tell people all the time that you don't have to be in a relationship to learn how to communicate and function appropriately in a relationship. I know, I, you know, Periscope does that sometimes. I hate when I'm listening to a good scope and I get kicked out and I'm like, no, stop freezing. Um, it does that. But you didn't miss um, the giveaway yet. So that's a good thing. So um, without further ado, are there any more, any more, any more questions? We'll wait a little bit. See if you have any questions. I have a friend that's dealing with father issues that I'm trying to help and keep. Okay, yeah, that's true. I was very single going to marriage conferences. That you're, that that's dealing with father issues. Oh, that and that's always very hard because what people don't really really understand is that our our the way we learn how to relate, um, 
pushing me. You've been, you've been pushed away in a relationship. Someone's pushing you away. Okay, I'll come back to you, supporter of AHJ. Um, when people um, when people have a relationship, they don't realize that they're learning how to relate from their relationships with their parents. The very first relationship that we have in life is the relationship that we have with our parents or our caretakers. So they teach us how to relate to other people by what they show us. That's why I tell parents all the time that, um, you know, your, your job, your, your child's first teacher, you have to be careful of what you do around your children because that's how they learn to interact within the world. And so um, if there's a situation where, you know, there's a, there's a neglectful father, then that child is already coming into the world with, um, thank you, thank you, Nikisha Michelle. That child is already coming into the world with deficits on what it feels like to be loved in a two-parent household. And so mothers can do it all and they can try to love them, but they can't give them that fatherly love. And even though we know they try, they can't. That masculine energy is needed. That masculine energy is needed to teach a young lady what it feels like to be loved by the opposite sex, what it feels like to interact with the opposite sex, what it feels like to be loved by the opposite sex. Hi, Lady Gazella. Welcome, welcome. Hi, hi. Retro, so hi, hi, hi. Welcome. Welcome to the... You've been on a couple of my scopes. I recognize the name. So welcome to the scope today. Um, you know, but, but when we have these situations where these parents are not there, then they are creating the deficit of learning how to have relationships in our adult relationships. So the first time that you get hurt in a relationship... Um, it's okay. It's okay that you're late. You can catch the replay. The first time that you get hurt in a relationship is, is you know, when you're in your adult relationships, it's not the first time to be the man you want your daughters to date. They will look for him and men. Absolutely. That's so true. That is so true. Um, the first time you get hurt in a relationship is not the first time you've been disappointed. If you've had some inconsistent parenting, then you you're already comfortable with that type of thing in a relationship. And so when people go into these relationships and they're like, how do I keep going from bad relationship to bad relationship? to Because it's a comfortable place for you. You're comfortable in it because you're used to it. So you have to track back, like, where did that first threat happen? Where did that first trauma in relationships happen and oftentimes it's with our parents our parents may have tried to do the best that they could do but the truth of the matter is our parents could have jacked us up and and here's another thing i applaud single mothers but there have been some single mothers that have messed up kids too you know <laughs> taught them some horrible things about how to interact in relationships too so you absolutely have to get into a space um okay okay have to get into a, a space of as an adult, because as a kid, you, you're still learning. You're still trying to grow. Who they want the daughters today because they have no... Absolutely, absolutely. When there is no reference, you'll, you'll participate in everything because you have no idea of, of what is the right thing or what's the comfortable thing. So when there is no reference, absolutely, you will participate in some things that probably are not the best for you. We could no longer show them what love looked like as husband and wife. So he shows them how awesome, awesome a man should treat them. When I was a girl, and and, and if you can imagine this, it's, it's, I, it's four of us. My parents had four girls. So just imagine what my dad went through, right? But my father, um, once a month, I had a daddy date with my dad, my sister. So he, so every Friday, he took one of us on, on a daddy date. So I knew what it was like to be treated on a date. I knew what it was like to have a man show protection. I know. Can you imagine? I knew what it was like to see what provision looked like. So when I started dating and looking for my mate, I was able to really say, nope, that's not a good one for me. Nope, that's not a good one for me. That's not going to work for me. And, and my husband now it's so funny. I, I really, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we were talking. I was like, 
my God, this man really is like my dad. You do really, you really, really, really grow up marrying what's comfortable to you, you know? So my husband, he's a wonderful provider, praise God, you know, that I was blessed with someone who understands my needs um, and what I need emotionally, financially, sexual, all that good stuff. I, I'm, I'm glad that I was blessed with that. Um, but he's so much like my father, so much like my father. What would our queens be if our fathers did as our father? Ah, oh, we could rule the world. We're some amazing people. We could rule the world. But it's so hard when when you're in a space, and especially if you're a single parent, when you're trying to play the role of parents. It's hard. It's 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 hard. It's a hard role to play, and it's unfair. It's hey Tashan, welcome girl. If you guys aren't following Tashan, please follow her. This is my home girl. We we grew up together. Um in the same neighborhood, went to school, went to school all together, all our whole life. Um, good people. She's a great, 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 great business coach. Um, graduate of Clock Atlanta. So she's down in Georgia doing her thing. If, um, if you are an entrepreneur, you should be checking out her scopes because she's giving off some great information for all you entrepreneurs out there. Yes. HBC, HBC, you love. Absolutely. So make sure you're following her. She's, um, she definitely is, um, is an is an expert in what it is that she's doing and you know to i didn't tell you the other day but i'm so proud of everything that you're doing girl so proud of you um but we get into these spaces of being stuck um and 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 if people have hurt us you know it, it's hard for us to move on and and it becomes just an awful thing so when we get betrayed in this way, and it seems like the betrayal sometimes is just unreal. You have to understand, especially when it comes that is just a sim. That's not the reason. So you got to figure out the core reason of why someone is cheating in your relationship. You have to fill out the core reason. All right. So are there any more questions? Any hot juicy giveaway? Any more questions? I'm waiting. I've enjoyed talking to you guys so far. I always love it when people want to do better in their relationships and 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 know that they deserve better. I love it. 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 I love it when people want more for themselves. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Make sure you follow me so I can follow you back. I like to follow everyone that follows me because you know, if you if you've got a business that that you're doing i want to know about what you're doing like retro services tell me all about what you do um because i because you you follow me i've seen you on a couple of my scopes so you know tell me all about what you have going on um so that i can make sure i'm, I'm supporting your efforts as well so guys i have a juicy 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 giveaway today i am running a um an, running another one of my relationship boot camps through the dr Roz academy um, and if you're not familiar with me, I like to do these teleclasses. Oh, am I breaking up now? Can you, are, are you guys good now? Am I here now? Sorry. Oh, I hate when Periscope is breaking up. I hope I'm not lo losing you guys. Cause I want you guys to hear about, um, hear about this great, great, great offer I have. So I'm running my relationship boot camp, but I am running a deal for all. How about now? Is, am I better now? I don't know. I don't know how to stop breaking me up. Am I better now? I don't know. I see me moving and I still see hearts. Still breaking up? Oh no. How about now? You can't hear me? Oh no. That's not good. Oh, my volume's up, so I don't know why you can't hear me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How about now? Am I okay. All right. There's reason two. Mine is kind of suffering, so I apologize to get through this. Breaking up and, and echoing. Oh, this is horrible. Come on, Periscope. What's going on? This shouldn't be happening. Um, let me try to get through this this um, while I can, while I have you guys. Just in and out. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, so I'm running a relationship boot camp, and we're getting started on October 26th. But... Um, this, this relationship boot camp, it is regularly $300, but I am giving it to my Periscope followers that are on this scope for $150. you are going to get it for half off. No, you can't hear me? 
Can you guys hear me now? Okay, that's what I'll do. So guys, I'm gonna start a new um I'm gonna start a new Periscope um called called giveaway, like like Nakisha Michelle just said, so that you guys can get this giveaway. So I don't know what's going on, but I'll start a new Periscope. Give me about five minutes and I'll come back on for the scope to do to do the um to do the uh giveaway, okay? So just be patient with me. I don't know what's going on. Um but be patient with me and I'll try to fix this issue, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in about five minutes.